first day that I arrived in St. Anthony's Monastery, as I told you, I came with two Indian priests who were visiting from India to stay with Pope Shinoda in his monastery at St. Bishori. The Pope organized a tour for them, and uh, I came with them on the tour, and we visited St. Anthony's Monastery and St. Paul's Monastery. When we arrived here, as I told you, we came straight to the cave. It was in the afternoon, and as we entered the cave, I remembered all the pictures which I had seen of the cave when I was in Australia. But it had not prepared me for the feeling that I had when I entered into this holy place. As we came in, the two priests came down and they approached the altar. I was standing at the back of the cave and watched them while they came and made their matanyas in front of the altar and uh, prayed to the saint. I was, it was the first time I had been in such a cave as this. I had been in big caves in Australia where you have uh, the, the icicles hanging from the roof and the, and the frozen water on the ground. But I had never been in a cave in which someone had actually lived. And that St. Anthony had lived in this cave, it was overpowering for me. So I was watching it with, in awe. My mind and my spirit were, were awake and I was watching it as if I was seeing something in a, the living presence of the Holy Spirit. So I was watching them and, and thinking to myself, how I would love with all my heart to be in this place forever. St. Anthony instilled into my heart. He gave me something of his, of his love, of this solitude, in that moment when I came into this cave. So I saw the two priests come and make their obeisance and say a short prayer. And then the two priests moved to the back of the cave and I came forward. As I came forward, I stood here and I started to think of all the situation that was around me how Pope Shinura wanted me to stay with him in St. Bishoy to protect me in his, in his house so I would not be suffering any difficulties. But I wanted difficulties. I wanted to live in the way that St. Anthony had lived. So I thought I should ask the saint directly. I've always been used to asking St. Mary for anything which I need. But on this occasion, on this day, when I arrived in this cave, I said to myself, St. Anthony is the father of the monks. And this is what I want, to be a monk. So I must ask the father, who would be my father, I must ask him to help me. So I approached the altar, and I poured out my heart. I said to him, Father Antonius, you know that Pope Shinura wants to keep me with him in St. Bishoy Monastery, but I'm ready to be like you. I want to be like you. I want to try the kind of life, to taste the solitude which you had to taste the solitary prayer which you had here in this cave. So I poured out my longing for this kind of life to the saint. And then I said to him, well, I usually ask St. Mary for anything which I need, but on this occasion I'm asking you, because you are the father of the monks, to make me a monk after your image. Because I remember that God made man in his own image, so I wanted to be made, to be remade in the image of St. Anthony. So I poured out my heart and I was praying to him here, standing in front of this altar. Then I made a metanya to, to seal my prayer with, with obedience. As I bent down, I thought that the other priest had left. Really, I thought they had gone out of the cave. So I bent down and I was, my heart was full of this prayer. And as I made my metanya, I heard behind me a word, an echo. It wasn't in my head, it was outside my head, it, it was behind me. And as I made my matanya, I heard this word, Maino Shiri. I can remember it echoing now, I can still hear it, it's 20 years ago, but I can still hear it. Here. And I didn't know what it meant. And as I stood up, I looked around, and there was nobody there, the two priests had gone. So it wasn't them who were speaking. So I knew that this is a word of life. We read about in the Paradise of the Holy Fathers that any young man who is seeking to live in the desert, he will ask the older father, Father, give me a word of life. And this word of life, I got it from St. Anthony in this cave. When he told me this word, Mainoshiri, I didn't understand it. So I turned back to the, to the altar and I prayed again in the same words. And when I made my metanya in front of the altar, 
I heard the same word behind, as if it was in the echoing in the back of the cave, my new shiri. Well, by that time I was awake to the, to the fact that this was the word of the saint. And so I start to repeat it. My new shiri, my new shiri, my new shiri. And I, I kissed the altar and I left. I went with the, the two fathers and we descended to the monastery. When we arrived in the monastery, I met Father Dioscorus who speaks English. And I asked him, Father, what is uh, the meaning of Mine Mashiri? And he looked at me for a moment, then he said, uh, this is Coptic. I said, yes, what does it mean? He said, well, it's from the Tezbeha. We say, uh, hail to St. Anthony, be Mine Mashiri, the one who loves his sons or who loves his disciples. When he told me this, you can imagine how warm my heart became. St. Anthony used a Coptic word, which means that he is the one who loves his sons, that he is thinking of me as his son. This was for me the greatest uh, answer which I could possibly get, that St. Anthony accepted me as a son of his, and that he would care for me, that he would, he would help me, he would love me. So this was the word of life which I needed and which I got from the saint in this holy place. I stored that in my mind and in my spirit as I went back to return to, to De, De Bishoy. And when the Pope uh, asked me, how was the trip? I told him, Your Holiness, I want to go and I want to live in St. Anthony's monastery. I want to live in the mountain. At first he laughed. And he said to me, uh, it's so hard, it's so difficult, you, know, you cannot do it, you know, it's, uh, it's from olden times, you know, nowadays times are different. And he tried to explain to me that I could live uh, quite well in the monastery there. But after tasting this, I could not. I could not leave this place. I could not leave this cave, which is, which is like the furnace of Babylon where the three holy youths met Christ in the middle of the fire. This cave is the holy furnace, the furnace of fire in which the monks have prayed since the time of St. Anthony. And now, every night, when I pray the Mass here, and I stand in front of this altar, I remember that the saint was here, that Father was here, and he, he sat here, he slept here, he prayed here. He spent his time here, he blessed this place. So from, from beginning, from the beginning when he told me the word Mainu Shiri until now when I give uh, the bread of life to the, to the deacons I find that there is a, a holiness in this cave which I have never experienced anywhere else and which I don't imagine can be anywhere else to this degree. For a monk, this is the holiest place on earth. This is where the Father began. And anyone who is watching this program any youth who have the time and have the chance to come here to pray in this cave, I urge you to take it, to take this chance, to visit the, the site of the father of the monks. Even if you're not a monk, to take the holy, the, the holy body and blood in this place is a life-giving experience because it lifts you up into the ascetic, the ascetic heaven of the monks. Of course we have the heaven of, of, the, of the angels and the saints and, and the community of the church triumphant, but there is also the heavenly taste of monasticism which is in this place. And this is the birthplace of it. This cave where St. Anthony perfected and, 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 and gave his missionary push to his monasticism by teaching his disciples. This is the place where it all began.